the Tory UK government has been hostile, it has been brutal, and it has been ineffective. While these are descriptions that could apply to any number of policy areas, it is especially true when it comes to immigration policy. It may surprise you uh, so, uh, that Wales has one of the oldest black communities in the UK. Long before people came to these shores through the Windrush scheme, people came from all over the world and settled in an area of Car around Cardiff docks known as Tiger Bay, and they have been doing so for 200 years. The reason why these docks were so busy and therefore attracted people from all over the world was because it was used to export the coal that fueled the British Empire. That industry generated so much wealth, but very little of it was kept in Wales, where the true cost of coal was paid for frequently and horrifically by the communities I represent. Alas, that's another debate for another day. It was said at one point that Cardiff's Tiger Bay could, post, uh, could boast 57 different nationalities and 50 languages within the mile-long stretch of, main, of mainly terraced houses. My party, Plaid Cymru, the Party of Wales, honours this tradition of Wales being an open and tolerant country. And while not all of Wales's residents share our policies, we will make no apology for striving for inclusivity. In our most recent manifesto, we proposed a migration strategy for Wales with clear actions, timelines and budgets. We are committed to easing the experience of migrants and people seeking asylum. This would include ending no recourse to public funds conditions and the elimination of healthcare charges for non-UK citizens in the NHS. We'd also expand eligibility for educational grants for migrant children and young people, including educational maintenance allowance, free school meals and the pupil deprivation grant. This would give all migrants and people seeking asylum access to public services when they need them. We wholeheartedly support the Welsh Government's policy to make Wales a nation of sanctuary, which is chiefly aimed at refugees and asylum seekers. While I don't have time tonight to go to delve into all 23 points, its aim is to settle some of the most vulnerable people who have fled from the most appalling circumstances and extreme danger in Wales. From our own background, from my own background, before politics, I was a trustee of a charity that set up a scheme to upskill doctors and dentists who had come to Wales after fleeing conflict in their homeland. The Wales Asylum Seeking and Refugee Doctor Scheme was established in order to meet the additional education and training needs of refugees and asylum seeker doctors and dentists in Wales to help them meet the language standard required to work in the NHS. Many of these people came from Syria where their homeland was torn apart by conflict. So far, more than 300 healthcare professionals have benefited from that scheme and are working in the NHS today. We support this, we do this, because it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing for us and it's the right thing for the people making Wales their home. If you have aspirations to be a compassionate country, I argue this is the only thing to do. Note, the UK government does not do this. Unfortunately, due to the limited devolution settlement we have in Wales, much of what we can do in my country is dictated to by Westminster, where the general approach could not be starker. The Tory UK government has been hostile, it has been brutal, and it has been ineffective. While these are descriptions that could apply to any number of policy areas, it is especially true when it comes to immigration policy. Whether migrant, refugee, or asylum seeker, you are illegal until you are proven human. The, this cold, callous, and cruel rhetoric really comes into play when you are not white. Now, this is nothing new when it comes to the Tories. We should not forget that it was Theresa May, as Home Secretary in 2012, whose policy was that of creating a hostile environment. 
it's quite amazing that due to the significant drift, some might say march to the right by the Tories over the last decade, she is now regarded as a moderate Conservative. The Overton window in British political discourse has moved so far to the right that it has moved into another postcode. The last 12 years of Tory immigration policy can be characterised by posturing and pandering to an increasingly rabid press. Not now. Policy that is not without its catastrophic failings. He is by no means a definitive collection from the last decade or so. The Immigration Acts of 2014 and 2016, which compelled health staff, employers and even landlords to act as border guards. The Windrush scandal, which caused untold misery for hundreds of families. The taxpayer-funded vans telling foreigners to go home. The highly skilled migrant scandal, which, due to minor errors in tax reforms, resulted in people being forcibly removed. The shocking levels of abuse uncovered at the Brookhouse UK Immigration Centre as a result of Panorama investigation. The investigation was so damning that even Priti Patel, as Home Secretary, had no choice but to order a public inquiry. I let that sink in. We cannot forget that the Home Office spent more than £1,500 of public money painting over cartoon pictures that were meant to welcome children to the Manson detention camp. If there was ever a perfect metaphor for a government losing its humanity, then this is it. Then you have the well-documented uh, agreement between the, uh, with the Rwandan government to which setting aside its reprehensible nature has been a huge waste of money. Under the plans, some asylum seekers arriving in the UK would be sent to Rwanda to have their claims processed there during a five-year trial. So far, and we've heard earlier, so far, £240 million has been paid to the Rwandan government in exchange for zero asylum seekers being flown there. With no irony, the UK has accepted some refugees fleeing unsafe situations in Yes, you guessed it, Rwanda. You can't make it up. This policy is highly unusual, not for its ineffectiveness or its spiteful nature. We are well used to seeing that from the Tories. No, it's unusual because we only usually see that level of wastefulness when the Tories are lining their own pockets. Most recently, we have had a Home Secretary, James Cleverly, who some might say is on a one-man mission to disprove that not everyone can live up to their name, has outlined a plan to increase the skilled worker earners re earnings threshold and the minimum income for family visas to £38,700. This will only split up families and tear lives apart. Some people ask why I want independence for Wales. Well, is it any wonder why I, or anyone other for that matter, would not want an escape from Westminster's grip when you see such staggering levels of incompetence and spitefulness? I'm just about to finish, so no, thank you. The UK is failing immigrants. It has failed them time and time again over recent years, and it will continue to do so until we vote for something different. I urge you to support the proposition. Diochamau.